Hey, everybody, what's up? I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching Sit Down. Melissa L. Williams here with us today. Lots going on for her. How are you? I am great. Thank you so much for having me today. You got it. So you're involved in the Tyler Perry BET world and definitely a good spot to be these days. So what's it been like jumping in there and even just having the creative ability to explore all these different parts and the different shows? Well, it's been uh, the Tyler Perry universe is something very extraordinary um, in that they do their own casting, they do their own production. It's 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 his own vision and its own his own studio. So it's unique in itself in that way because what I experienced at Tyler Perry Studios, I don't think unless they unless they adopt his way of filming, I'll ever experience anywhere else. And so it kind of prepares anybody who does. Uh, work with him or work with Tyler Perry Productions. Um, it, it prepares you for anything and, and you feel like you can take on any challenge because, you know, shooting at the rapid pace that we do, learning lines that fast on the spot when he, because sometimes he gives, you know, lines on the spot because he's the writer as well, as well as creator, as well as director. Uh, so it's like, you know what I mean? You, it's a, it's another, it's a, it's a once in a lifetime experience that I hope that all actors could get to have the opportunity to experience. Cause it's not, it's nothing like other sets. So is he like a one or one or two shot guy or like how, how quickly are we talking here when he shoots? It, how about one to one and a half? <laughs> I don't even know about two. We get, we, cause it's like, um, sometimes he, we'll go back and, and maybe get the beginning or maybe just the end when I'm talking about that half because mm -hmm. he never does a full take over. Mm -hmm. He's already ready on the next like shot, next setup. And that's why as actors, you also have to bring it because yeah. it's, that's it. Your one to one and a half takes is what's going to be shown. So it's, that's another um, challenge, a cool acting challenge for actors to overcome as well because it just teaches you to always be on. Why don't we talk about The Oval? That's a show that's had a lot of success so far. What has been the coolest part of that experience? The Oval is so fun because, oh my gosh, it, it, that show is so dramatic that yeah. people, people are invested so much that sometimes they even figure out where the storyline is going. And it's pretty exciting because I can't, for the life of me, figure out any of Tyler Perry's <laughs> turns. Every time an episode ends, it's always something that I'm like, and then you have to watch next week because he has you he has you sucked in like that so um the oval is a lot of fun i got to play two characters denise and ruth who are twin sisters and very different one is obviously in a cult the other is seducing the president on a regular basis so <laughs> two totally different characters and i think that was fun for me because um though they were both passionate in different ways um they were alike in some ways because obviously the si familial relations but just the like-mindedness and getting going after what they want and not taking no or any obstacle for like a, an answer it was just like she wants the president she's gonna get the president uh <laughs> she wants her daughter she's gonna kidnap her daughter you know what i mean <laughs> have you played or had a situation like that where you played two different roles in one show Actually, that's the first time. That yeah. would be my first ever twin experience, playing two roles in one show. All of that in, in the Oval for mm -hmm. me. So it was definitely a, a blessing. Yeah, I would imagine that's a certain challenge and also like a certain trust from Tyler and his team to be like, all right, you know what, most like you got this and you got to execute each and every time. Absolutely. I felt uh, really honored because honestly, I was wrapped with Ruth. We'd already shot everything, everything. and I was on my way to the airport and Tyler Perry calls me and he's like, uh, long story short, um, what do you think about Denise and Ruth being twins? And I'm like, this is with me not, this is like, cause like I said, I can't think of the mind he has. Mm -hmm. So he, I'm like, oh yeah, that'd be cool. And then he's like, what about if you play Denise? And I was just like, yeah, let's yeah, do it. Why not? Like, let's first, do it. You know, just, Cause at the, at that point I had already been thrown everything that I could be thrown because I had finished Ruth Ruth's role already. So I was uh, I was like, game, I'm game. You already put me through the, you know, the Tyler Perry uh, ringer with the first round, which was doing Ruth. Mm -hmm. And that was intense because it was back to back. All, all my scenes were pretty much back to back doing that. And so you're talking about different days, but you know, within minutes of filming, it's, 
it was a lot. So I had, I had been through that and, and he's like, we're shooting Denise tomorrow, by the way. And I'm like, what else do you want to pop out of this national <laughs> conversation? Like, what else are you going to tell me? I, I just was like, yep. Okay, sure. I need the scripts. And he's like, you just gotta be yeah. ready for anything. Right. Pretty much. Because <laughs> honestly, um, I feel like that's that's the opportunities that he presents when you are uh, one man you know what I mean well obviously it takes a team and it takes a village but it is the Tyler Perry vision that everyone is working behind and um, I just feel like those are the types of opportunities you get when you work with somebody like him it's like he can make that decision just that fast hey actually I want you to do this and it's like whoa you know yeah absolutely so did Ruthless come as a result of the Oval or was Ruthless beforehand how did that all shake out Okay, so actually, so Denise was the first role I was offered. So okay. I tried out for Sisters in the Oval um, mm-hmm. at the time when he was casting both shows. And I got Denise. They called me and they're like, you, you know, you're Denise. So I'm like, yes. And maybe like a week later, uh, Tyler Perry called me and that's when he told me about Ruth. And he's like, now I know you're Denise in my show. And first of all, that phone call is a conversation in itself because I didn't even, he called, I didn't answer because I don't have his number saved. I've, well, I, I'm sorry. I'm just, you know, actress aspiring to yep. really You're do something. You're just trying to work. do your thing. You're not thinking about all this other stuff involved. I'm not thinking about a number that's calling me that I don't have. So he calls, he left a text, not a voicemail. And it's like, it's Tyler Perry here. I'm trying to reach you. And I still was in like a, let me call this number back. You know, <laughs> who is like, who's playing with me right now? That, that's literally what I thought. Yeah. But no, as soon as I called that number, there was no hello. It was like, hi, you're playing Denise in my new show. I have a couple moments to talk. Um, I really want to know if you're interested in playing this other role. It is less episodes and, you know, uh, less screen time in the Oval, but I'm doing a spinoff with her. And I want you to consider it. You know, I've been wanting to work with you. And I'm like, First of all, if I could have had a camera on my face while he was talking to me, oh, I man. think people, <laughs> that's, that should be a, a, you know, the Michael Jordan meme where he cried, yep. where he cried, <laughs> that face should have been a meme because I don't even, I, just like, you know, just so many Couldn't facial expressions because yeah. you're like, me? <laughs> okay, I just auditioned in front of you and it's not like words were said, you know, it's just, Tyler Perry's in the room and it's time to do your, your thing, you know? So that phone call was something that I, I will always remember. And, um, it definitely, it, it started everything. That's where I heard about Ruthless. And mm-hmm. that's where I said, yes, I'd love to do it. I already obviously read the oval. So I know about the character Ruth and I'm, I, I want to do it. So what was it like further diving into those really deeper waters where it's like subject matters intense, like we're really going for it with this show. Like, you know, how would you describe that experience? Well, when I, so when I said yes, obviously that Ruthless hadn't even been written. So all I knew was, oh, this is going to be a fun ride. Cause that's what Tyler, wild fun ride. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I can already imagine that. I mean, it's about a cult. Right. So, um, I uh, was told to watch some documentaries on uh, Netflix and I did. And I was like, okay, well, this is what happened in real life. And I feel like I only have, um, time to do it justice if I am going to do it and um when I got the scripts I mean I definitely was like my my eyes were widened by the things that were happening but I also remembered um just remembered that like this is this is actually has happened or is happening so regardless of like how mature the content is it's not anything different from things that are on tv right now so it wasn't something that made me say oh no can't do it hands down you know what i mean mm-hmm. it was just like okay let's look at it let's take the let's take melissa out of the equation and think about this character and the fact that this is really some people's situation right you know so yeah yeah and i think it's really awesome the world that tyler has created and especially now too in our country with the conversation around why black lives are so important and just yeah. having the opportunity to have these different roles like I'm, I'm sure you think about it so what does it mean to be a black entertainer especially in the world that we're living in today well, honestly, oh, man, I, I'm so grateful to, for this to be my um, br- breaking point or opening uh, into the industry at this time because Black Lives Matter is something that I've been passionate about since I was younger because I grew up in Oklahoma mm-hmm. where there's not a lot of Black people. Even though we did have Black Wall Street 
uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I grew up in Oklahoma City and um, predominantly, you know, uh, white schools and went through some similar things, not, not, you know, anything close to what we're seeing on the news, but, you know, went through some things. And so I always knew that my voice would be um, elevated in some way because I, I have, I've always done musical theater and stage was something that I've always felt so comfortable on. And I have always been a passionate person. So those two things um, coupled together, I just feel like it's a great time for me to share not only my experience, but um, that you can overcome and that though these things might have happened or you're going through these things, family members have gone through these things, you can be the light in, in, your, in your situation. And I think that's what I'm learning. I'm trying to be the light, figure out ways. Um, it may not necessarily be on social media, but ways to be that light. And I, I'm coming up with some really good ideas. So I'm excited for uh, what I can bring to the table as an actress and producer and activist. Yeah, yeah, it's really beautifully said. And just listening and learning is so important. Like you mentioned Black Wall Street, like up until a couple of weeks ago, like I'd never learned about the Tulsa massacre. It's like, you need to take the time to read about it, learn about yeah. it. And we all need to talk about it because it's like, this is a seminal moment in our country's history that we've just completely glossed over. I'm just telling you right now, as somebody who's from Oklahoma, born and raised, it's sad. We did have a class, I will say, called Oklahoma History, that if you're an Oklahoma student, you have to take it in high school. But that, like, brushed over the, the massacre also. And it's kind of like, this is, these are the things that um, when... Um, other artists, I like to say black artists that speak out and they're like, well, you know, Dave Chappelle, for instance, well, we've been trying to tell you, I've been trying to tell you. It's like, yeah, um, if our history was, uh, you know, something that was made uh, relevant, maybe these things wouldn't keep happening because it's, it's, it's just swept under the rug. Like we could learn from them, grow from them, find a find a way to, to never let it happen again. But instead, because it's not even part of someone who lived in Oklahoma, who's born and raised, it's not even part of our history that much. Crazy. It's like, of course you wouldn't hear about it. Of course not. So it's, now I'm excited because like Russell Westbrook and I think a couple other mm -hmm. people are putting their focus on Tulsa. So I'm just like, all of these things are happening for a reason and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to be a part of, of this time. Yeah, it's all happening for a reason and it's all leading to really important conversations, great content, and your voice is out there now, which is awesome. And I'm really happy that people can listen to it and people can watch your show. So Melissa, thanks so much for jumping on today. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you and um, definitely looking forward to talking to you again sometime.